So we want to start by acknowledging that we are in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. And this territory is covered by the treaties of peace and friendship. Our presenters today will just take a quick minute to give a little more introduction for ourselves. Our teacher review team, as Tara mentioned, have been working with EECD to develop this resource and give some feedback. So I am Michelle Hoffman. I work in CCRCE. I've been teaching for about four years now, uh, all at Parsborough Regional High School, which is a seven to 12 school. And I have taught or will be teaching some combination of math and science within those four years. Um, Anne, would you like to say a little bit about yourself? Sure. My name is Anne Pentecost. I'm from the Cape Breton Regional Centre of Education. Uh, I've been a math coach for the last number of years, and I primarily go into classes in high school from 9 to 12, uh, but also 6 to 8 as well. So I kind of see where everybody uh, works together and how things move along. Um, been doing this for a while and, and uh, used to teach grade nine math uh, exclusively before I became a math mentor. And uh, and I'm Maggie McPhee. I also work in CCRCE. I work at Parsboro uh, with Michelle. I teach a variety of seven to 12 mathematics. Um, I've just finished my second year of teaching and excited to be here. All right, great. Okay, so what we're going to cover today for our presentation is to give you a little bit of background into this financial literacy supplement and talk about some of the potential learning activities that you can incorporate into your classroom, as well as how these were implemented with our own grade nine students in this past June. So you can get a little bit of a picture for how this looked for us and what you might wanna take for yourself or adapt into your own learning style. And then we're going to provide you with some resources at the end and obviously have some time for questions and discussion at that point. Please, of course, feel free if you have any questions to unmute yourself and ask during the presentation. Uh, we're fine with this being a little more informal or you can type them in the chat as well at any point. That's great. Okay, so our purpose here again is to introduce you to that Math 9 curriculum supplement. It is available in both French and English and it was designed to increase financial literacy for students. So some of the background for how this came about, financial literacy was identified as a focus when our new government uh, took their place. They sent out their mandate letter to their ministers and our education minister was tasked with improving some financial literacy amongst other things. When the EECD looked through the curriculums, it was noted that finances of some type were covered in every single year, grade one up to grade 10 especially, uh, but not any in grade nine. So they really focused on that grade specifically to bring about these outcomes. In addition to that, some Canadian students had been surveyed and asked what they most wanted to learn about money. So thus, this survey, sorry, was done by the Canadian Foundation for Economic Education or CFEE. This is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that has a goal to improve economic stability and financial literacy among all Canadians. Um, they do quite often specifically focus on youth. So for this survey that we're gonna talk about here, about 6,000 young people from 12 to 17 years of age were gathered and they provided their thoughts on financial literacy. Obviously, a lot of information was gleaned from this survey. I'm just going to cover a small piece of it so you can get a little bit of a grasp onto how this took place uh, to be incorporated into the development of the supplement. So here we have the top 12 topics that youth were interested in learning about uh, related to financial literacy. So some of the best ways to prepare for earning money, getting a good job and a career, making good spending decisions, different ways and means to save money, how to plan for future education is on a lot of students' minds. Obviously, number five, the dreaded taxes, how to file your taxes. Honestly, myself, I still think I need some learning on that one, so that's always a big one. Different ways to invest money, um, possible types of risks and returns, and how to play the market in that uh, way. The costs and challenges when you move out or leave home. So especially for myself, uh, and Maggie, I know with our grade 11, 12 students, they're thinking about this a lot and how they can save for it, what it's going to look like for when they are out on their own. How to avoid different frauds and scams, 
ways to make larger purchases like a computer, car, or home, which ties in nicely with number 10 there, budgeting money. So once they have a budget set up and they have been saving some money, what can they do to make larger purchases? Number 11, understanding how student loans work. Just anecdotally, I have noticed with my students that is a big piece of financial literacy that's missing. A lot of my grade 12 students, despite being a few months away from taking on student loans from themselves or having already applied for student loans are shocked when I casually mention something about the daily interest that's accrued on my own student loans. Uh, so they don't really have a solid understanding of how that happens. And then credit cards, another big one. How those work, how to pick the right one, how to avoid going into tons of credit card debt. So with all of that background information, that mandate letter for the Minister of Education, the different survey results, and then that piece of financial literacy that wanted to be focused on that was missing in grade nine, the Nova Scotia EECD gathered a working group of teachers and mentors, which is the three of us you see here today, to develop different activities that can be incorporated into the grade nine curriculum. So these learning experiences were developed to align with existing curriculum outcomes. I have that in bold there, but I do want to stress that specifically. This is not a supplement that is in addition to the many, many curriculum goals you already have to hit for grade nine. This is different activities that you can do in your classroom that will specifically hit those strands and hit those outcomes already for you. So it can be incorporated within those existing pieces. And these were designed as well to enhance instruction, assessment and student engagement. A lot of the supplement that we're going to discuss here today is presented from more of an inquiry-based learning lens. They start off with some guiding questions. They have some awesome videos or different hooks to get your students really interested and engaged in following through with these tasks. Okay, so looking at the grade nine math curriculum specifically, these four outcomes here linked beautifully with financial literacy. And these four we'll talk about in a little bit later on. Uh, were used to develop the five learning activities that we're going to discuss. So for your number strand here, students will be expected to demonstrate an understanding of rational numbers by comparing and ordering rational numbers and solving problems that involve arithmetic operations on rational numbers. Our geometry outcome, students will be expected to determine the surface area of composite 3D objects to solve problems. And then two nice ones from patterns and relations. Students will be expected to generalize a pattern arising from a problem-solving context using a linear equation and verify by substitution. And students will be expected to graph a linear relation, analyze the graph, and interpolate or extrapolate to solve problems. So in addition to those four that specifically are linked within the activities we're going to do, uh, uh, sorry, discuss today, there are some outcomes from statistics and probability that would link really nicely with financial literacy as well. So these are some ideas, perhaps, if you've presented financial literacy early in the year and you want to come back to it, these are some tie-ins you could use within your own classroom to bring back financial literacy or to strengthen that outcome a little bit stronger in your own classroom. So the five activities then that EECD developed and Maggie, Anne, and myself gave some feedback on and tried within our own classrooms are Can You Buy a Car, Saving for Post-Secondary, Greenhouses of the Future, making money on social media, and deal or no deal, choosing a cell phone plan. So I'm going to hand it over then to Anne and Maggie, and they're going to discuss a little bit of background on each of these, talk about them in a little more depth, and show you some ways they incorporated into classrooms with math line learners as well. Thank you. So I'm going to start with an 3 can you buy a car? So um, a lot of grade nines are very anxious. They're 14 and 15 year olds to drive. And all of them want, you know, a Lamborghini or some kind of very cool car. Um, so we thought it would be a good way for them to learn some, um, some financial literacy by being realistic about what they could and couldn't afford and all the costs associated with that. So we started with a discussion on just saving for buying a used car or a four-wheeler because a lot of kids in grade nine, um, that's their, their uh, lifestyle or, you know, a motorcycle or whatever. And so we, we kind of looked at it for when they get their license. So not right now, but in a year or two, depending on how old they are, what would they need to have saved in order to be able to buy what they want to buy? So we'll kind of start it with some activating questions like, how do you earn money? Um, how much would you have to save? 
what other considerations are there? Like, you know, we talk about insurance, gas, repairs, tires, etc. And of course, in all this discussion, we also talked about uh, um, how parents would help or wouldn't help um, because, you know, depending on everybody's situation and um, what kind of considerations they would have to take into account for that. If their parents are buying them a car, okay, then what's their, their role in it? Um, would they have to pay their insurance or just gas or repairs or whatever? Or if it's all on them, what kind of, uh, what kind of situation does that put them in financially? So ways to earn money. Um, in talking to them and just kind of brainstorming, kind of asked the class, like, you know, how do you earn money today? Um, some people work part time at a restaurant during the summer months only. So we're talking about how much can you earn then if you're only working three to four months a year um, babysitting. So, you know, what could you do to increase if, if you thought you made $120 this last month, what could you do to increase that? Or what happens if you didn't have that particular job, whatever. Um, we talked about yard work and walking dogs and labor and a whole host of uh, different jobs that they came up with um, and how, you know, some are better than others. We talked about um, hourly versus paid for the job. Um, there was a lot of good discussion. I mean, we, we didn't spend a whole class talking about it or anything. Um, but the financial literacy aspect of it was intriguing to hear how much they know and how much they don't know about earning money and saving and whatnot. So it was a pretty cool way to start the discussion. So in groups then, students were asked to consider options and these were just options we presented them with. Um, so we kind of looked online and we kind of um, looked at some realistic um, models that uh, might be affordable and might be um, accessible to them in their areas. And we put some extra information because um, some people, uh, you know, will look at the kilometers and, and, and analyze that. Some people will only look at the price. Some people only look at the colors. So um, we just wanted to give them some information, some food for thought, and uh, some different strategies to, to kind of weed out what's the best option for them. And we also put in a four wheeler because it's realistic for a lot of them that they travel in their communities when they're in rural communities, um, more by four wheeler or motorcycle, um, more than they would a car. So these were just things that we came up with. You could use the same or you could use different. It's just a, an example of what we did. So then each group, uh, we put them in groups of um, three to four, depending on your class, and each group was assigned a different vehicle. So we kind of started out with a sample organizer looking something like this, very detailed, um, often redundant, but we wanted to kind of bring everything up as a talking point more than anything. Put those vehicles at the top and then we, we gave one um, group their choice so it could be a brand new vehicle um, or it could be um, you know a, a good used vehicle that they have to finance or whatever um, we talked about purchase and down payments uh, how the down payment affects it uh, right off the get-go and then we talked about interest rates which is very new concept for grade nines because they don't really um, understand it. They've calculated um, things before like discounts and stuff in grade eight, um, taxes, um, you know, calculating tips and stuff like that. But interest as itself in a loan, um, they're not very aware of. So we kind of broke it down a bit and we said like, what is an interest rate? What does 4.99% mean? Um, we went with months because we were kind of talking about a one to two year time frame. Um, and because they were um, more apt at, at calculating their monthly earnings, we kind of went with months just to, to um, help them understand it better and see the, the uh, connections. We talked about simple interest only because where this is their first time talking about interest, we didn't want to get into the complexities of all the different uh, scenarios they could come into. And we explained that to them, but we were just going to talk about like 
this is the most simplistic um, method that you can see and let's just go with it and see what you know what trends we can find so we talked about a monthly payment including and then excluding interest the total interest paid per month and then we kind of went over the year of the uh, over the interest of the term of the loan so it was really eye-opening for them and some people did more calculations some people did less some people right away jumped from you know one to the other there was no down payment there was a down payment bigger down payment what the effects were so there were so many good discussions and um, it was good for them to be able to analyze what they pay versus how much interest they pay so they really got a good sense and could ask some really good questions it really made them start thinking anyway <laughs> um, on the next slide we kind of looked at this as teachers and kind of um, updated the graphic organizer a bit because when we were first doing it we just wanted to kind of put everything on there redundant or not so they could kind of see um, but we came up with this um, kind of organizer that might be more beneficial um, for them to just have fewer columns and fewer uh, calculations that they have to use but then to still be able to see the big picture so we use that um, group discussion so as i said we talked about simple versus compound we talked about how interest rates uh, affect it and like um, Michelle said in the beginning, there's lots and lots of videos and we'll give you um, some information about that at the end of the presentation. Um, but there's lots of videos, there's lots of websites, there's really good resources out there that uh, you can tap into. So don't feel like you're on your own um, with any of this. And um, extra costs, gas, insurance, stuff like that. I mean, you could bring in literacy even, just like reading articles on uh, how all this ties into, you know, the cost of living and stuff like that. Really, the sky's the limit, but it doesn't have to be cumbersome and it doesn't have to be um, something extra you do that could just be a task that you use in order to teach your rational numbers um, but still at the same time doing something that interests them so the discussions were really good they were super super engaged and everybody kind of had a say or a take on it so it was really um, a powerful thing they were happy to be talking about it <coughs> excuse me the next one that we kind of talked about was saving for post-secretary education. Although a lot of not grade nine students aren't there yet in their thinking, um, you know, some of them still want to be astronauts and, and whatever. Um, it's just a, a good way to talk about um, possibilities for the future and to show them like, what is a student loan and um, how much interest do you have to pay and how many years do you have to pay? So how much money would you have to make and stuff like that? Again, the discussions were really, really great. Like instead of finding out, you know, the volume of uh, 35 watermelons, like this was something that was really um, pertinent to them. So they used the My Blueprint on the Gene Nespez landing page and they researched the cost of different institutions or programs that they'd like to pursue. And we said right from the beginning, that could change and that's fine, but just to give an idea, pick something and whatever. Consider tuition as other things, as accommodations, books, um, meal plans, stuff like that. Uh, use the number of pay periods from now until they plan to enroll. What can their parents give? What do they have to give? Um, saving in a suburb job and whatever. So it kind of gave them an understanding of what they need to set aside as savings each day if they want to. Or the the expense of it and, and how much parents might need to do that. Um, so even though it's not completely um, on a grade nine student to do this, obviously, um, it gives them a good sense of, wow, it's a big investment for parents to have to um, set aside each month or each pay or whatever as well. 
Um, so there's a sample calculation sheet. So when they're kind of going through the My Blueprint, they can look at all these things, how much expenses, you know, what am I going to do, how many pays, and all this. And the, the discussion was kind of eye-opening for them because they didn't realize how much it could be. And we talked about university versus um, trade school versus uh People were talking about aesthetics and hairdressing and, you know, certificates and diploma courses and whatnot. So it kind of gave them an overview. Um, and then, of course, we talked about how much money you would make potentially in those roles. So, you know, OK, like if I'm going to university to be a doctor, you know, I need to save a lot, but I'll actually make a lot. So I'll be able to pay it back type of thing. So the discussions were phenomenal um, when we got to these parts. Um, so again, we talked about where can teens get jobs, um, how much do they pay, what factors do you need to consider when saving, how do deductions affect the number of hours you need to work. So that's a very big discussion for them. Some kids will have those part-time jobs that they actually see um, EI and taxes and whatnot um, taken away and some people won't because they're working for their neighbor and they're just getting $40 for mowing a lawn or whatever so it, it kind of gave eye-opening experiences for both of them and what factors do you need to consider when saving for a major purpose so uh, a purchase sorry so they really um, had to think about you know how life can affect Things like COVID, how would that affect it? Um, if this was you two years ago saving for a vehicle when people were on um, lockdown and whatnot. So it, it had a lot of real life applications to it. The third one that we kind of said would be kind of cool is uh, going in with GL1, which is surface area. And we talked about Hope Blooms, which is a nonprofit organization that empowers youth through social enterprise. So they have a youth urban agriculture program that allows youth to grow organic food. And they have an award winning off the grid green host located in Halifax, for those of you that didn't know, and I didn't know before that. Um, learners are asked to imagine that Hope Blooms is expanding and are tasked with planning and building a new greenhouse in their school community. So learners propose a possible design for their greenhouse and determine the surface area in order to calculate the cost of building materials. And we know that surface area is a, a big part of the grade nine curriculum. Um, so we just wanted to um, show how you could incorporate more financial literacy into that aspect of it um, without just the let's paint it at this much, um, you know, $3 per, per uh, square meter or whatever. So it just gives another option. So we did some thinking tasks with differentiation and we were looking at thin slicing. So if we look at different models, like which one's gonna be most cost efficient, uh, which is the better, um, you know, situation for how much money you want to spend and whatnot what gives you the better product at the end which has more you, you can look at all the different factors that might come into play there um, and you're still getting them to do surface area um, modeling but to them it's because they have a purpose so they're really trying to um, you know minimize costs and 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 maximize um, product products and stuff so um, it was pretty cool to see how engaged they got in it and actually competitive um, they kind of uh, can you know bounce each other off and well my design is going to be better because of and so they're looking at the pros and cons of the different um, designs and whatnot as well so it's it's pretty it's pretty powerful to see them engaged instead of just doing surface area um, because you know there's questions in the curriculum that say to do it it actually made it purposeful and real life for them, and they really enjoyed that part of it. Um, we talked about doing your own. Um, yes, Suad, I can just see your uh, your um, comment there, and it is so good. Like talk about different. Um, uh, materials and stuff and and that's what we kind of asked them to do too. learners. 
um, can design their own green hoses that incorporate two or more 3D objects and calculate the surface area of the building. They can decide on the materials. They can, you know, do a little bit of research on the price of the materials and what's best to cover the entire surface of their greenhouse based on what they're um, producing. And then learners will create a quote based on surface area calculations and investigations into those costs of those materials. And what an awesome way to bring a real life activity into something um, that they can use, you know, every day and use in their math class. And I think I just seen somebody um, talk about, uh, what did you just say there? Sorry, I'm just trying to see the chat. Um, local business as well, if they use filters to source prices as well, absolutely. And that's what we did with the um, getting a car too. We actually went on um, Kijiji and different places like that. Uh, um, we went on to local car dealerships and stuff. So exactly, there's so many, there's so many ways to incorporate it um, that you can make it real life and local and, um, you know, all those different things that you can think about all the different factors involved. So how did you determine the cost of your greenhouse? What were the challenges? Um, what is the relationship between costs and service area and how did this impact your decisions? Um, so we kind of let them discuss as a group and then we, uh, as their own group, I mean, and then kind of filtered into a bigger discussion in class. And uh, they've actually seen surface area in a very new light uh, through this activity. And it's not an add-on, it's just a different way of teaching it um, through inquiry-based rather than, you know, just calculate here's an object or whatever. I'm gonna talk about the next two activities. So the first one, they're both from the Patterns and Relations Unit. If I'm breaking up or just please tell me in chat, my internet is not behaving today. So the first one was about making money on social media. So it was connected to generalizing a pattern using a linear equation and using this information to evaluate um, earning potential for a career as a vlogger on social media. Uh, my students were particularly fond of this. Some of them um, very much think they can be vloggers or at least TikTokers right now. So we were creating linear equations based on tables of values and solving problems using linear equations. So I, over the past uh, two years, have been implementing the Building Thinking Classrooms framework within my classes. So I did use that framework here and was able to use the tasks within the supplementary document um, as thinking tasks. So the students started with um, the problem over here on the side. Um, where they're earning for like how much money they're earning for thousands of views and then looking at how much the vlogger was making for a single view uh, they did like this and then they explained they're like oh I thought TikTokers made more than that they connected a lot of this to TikTok this is just um, sort of connected generally to something we called like ViewTube but uh, right now TikTok's the thing so that's what we connected it to and then they were able to use this information to create a table of values and look at when the earnings were uh, 10,000 views or 50,000 views and how many views would be needed to earn $250 in a single day. I use this at the end of the year as a bit of a review activity and they really liked it and had a lot of fun with this. And there were a lot of comments about TikTok, but they were on task, so it was good. Next slide, Michelle. Afterwards, they became their own VTuber after a couple minutes of jokes about being a VTuber. Um, they completed this graphic organizer that is found within the supplement. They quite liked it. Uh, they had a lot of fun choosing what their name would be, what their channel would be about. We had uh, quite a few channels about four wheeling. It was very popular, um, but the graphic organizer worked really well. And the students were, some of them were overestimating how much they could make on of uh, YouTube. But um, I think it was very, um, 
it was very accurate and well connected for them and they just had a lot of fun doing it even though it seems a little bit out like sort of a pipe dream maybe for us all of my students were like yeah no i can make money on tiktok it was tiktok so for them it was uh, really connected to their everyday life because a lot of them are trying to become famous on TikTok. Um, so even though not a lot of people really make that much money on social media like this, they all think they can. So they were they were really engaged for this task. Uh, next, we looked at, I think I did some discussion questions for the first one, but um, they are found within the... Uh, no, go back a slide, Michelle. Sorry. Or what were those the discussion questions after that? Did we just skip over them? No. Uh, I think there were discussion questions for this um, in the supplementary document that we did and the students really liked them in their own task. Now we can go on to the next task. Um, this was actually the first activity I ran with them and they liked the view too, but they loved this one. This was really, um, this is really something that they were looking at. So I started with, um, it was the deal or no deal choosing a smartphone plan. I started with a same and different activity, which is a sort of a math talk routine that some teachers use and they really like it. We were just looking at these two graphs and comparing um, where they were the same and where they were different and what that might mean. It was a really great way to get them into the task. So I think in the supplementary document, this was found a little bit further in, but I pulled it up to use as an intro task. So uh, again, we used another thinking task because we were doing this for a building thinking classroom. So they were working on uh, vertical whiteboards and in groups of three, and they were looking at this problem here. So a local retail store is offering a special deal on a purchase of a tablet. So either the tablet for 12 monthly payments of $75 tax included with no money down, um, or the regular purchase price of 500, um, plus 15% HST, which would you pick? Um, I think I added in a sentence, please support with math, um, or else sometimes you get some interesting responses. And then I had some extension questions. So I started with the thinking task, and then when students were sort of finishing up, um, I would go to the groups and give them these extension questions. So how much would the customer be spending after six months with the first one with the 12 monthly payments. And if the customer has only saved $350, what month will they run out of money in? Afterwards, we had a really great discussion on this. So we talked about the factors that affect your purchases. Um, we talked about how you can locate accurate information to investigate options to meet your needs and what's the difference between a want and a need and what would be important to you to choose a new smartphone plan. We also talked a little bit about related to the tablet, how much, how many months you would have to save for in order to buy the tablet at the um, 300, at the $500 price, I believe. And they really, we talked about why you might buy things on a monthly payment versus all together and what sort of reasoning goes into that. But they were really invested because my entire grade nine class all have phones and they break them semi-regularly. So they're really invested in buying new phones because they drop theirs on the floor. Next slide. So then um, I kept them in their same groups, but we did a would you rather, but I did this again as a thinking problems task. And they were comparing option A and B for the cell phones. And I was asking which one they would choose. And I asked them to justify their choice using a graph. They, um, it ended up changing to mostly a table. If you're using white books that have sort of grid paper, um, but sometimes just on blank um, whiteboards, they have a little bit of a trouble drawing them. So we would, were using Desmos to create some of the graphs. They really liked the get $25 in bill credits when you um, get a friend to sign up. A lot of my students were convinced that they could get a friend to sign up like each week. And we had a lot of great discussions about whether that was a sustainable method for keeping your phone bill low. Um, and then how many friends you could realistically get to switch over. But they had, they had a lot of fun with this. They really enjoyed this task. Next slide, please. 
here is them um, at the slides. Uh, you can see some of their attempted graphs. We had a lot of tables of values um, and they were working in their groups there and they're writing sentences. And this is just them working. You can see a little sketch off to the side that they sometimes do when they're done, but uh, they really enjoyed this. And if you go to the next slide, so this is our Desmos class data. So um, in the supplement, uh, there's a link to how to do this on Desmos, but they have a table function in just the regular Desmos graphing calculator where you can enter um, table of values and it will graph it for you. So once we decided how many friends you could reasonably convince to sign up for a phone plan, we, we settled on zero being the probable amount. Um, we put the data in and we were able to look at this graph and have some really great conversations um, about uh, what it meant and which, um, which one they might choose. Uh, so where can you find the supplementary document? You can find the supplement on the curriculum website under resources and then online resources. And then there are also um, a lot of bilingual resources available um, to help support this. So there are questions being added to uh, Knowledge Hook um, that support the financial, that support financial math type questions within these already existing outcomes. And all of these are linked through the GNESPES page, but I do believe Michelle's going to talk a little bit more about it. Yeah, so I'm just going to show you quickly where you can find it, although I'm sure you're all very familiar with the curriculum page. I'll just run through it so you can see exactly where it is and a little bit of what it looks like. Um, so I'm hoping I can flip that. Okay, let me peek. Beautiful. All right, so if you're on the curriculum page, if you just go to your Math 9 curriculum the way you typically would, I teach in English. Um, I was born and raised in Alberta, so unfortunately I know very little French, so I'm just going to stick with the English programs here. It is available in French, though, however, if you happen to be able to speak that language. Okay, so you're on your uh, English outcomes here. I'm going to my grade 9 outcome and then Math 9. And you have your typical outcomes, as you would see down here. If you're down on the resources portion of the page and you hit online resources, you will find it down here, this financial literacy supplement. There are, all, sorry, there are also some junior achievement uh, math supplements as well that you might be interested in looking at that will tie in some more financial literacy there too. So if you click here to open your financial literacy supplement, it's going to look like this. So just a quick peek, it looks really similar to the typical curriculum documents. And I just wanted to give you a a little bit of a look into what the supplement has. So we have some guiding questions, different ways to connect for each outcome, um, different ways you can get a discussion started. As we mentioned, there's some videos for different uh, outcomes later on, and there's some really good guiding questions and discussion questions as well. And I noticed we were having a bit of discussion in the chat about extensions with other subjects. So there are links under each section as to what other classes they might be incorporated into. Perhaps if you're interested in doing some project-based learning with some other teachers, um, there are some really great connections to things like citizenship, different language courses, French or English, um, and Tech Ed as well has a, some really great ones, especially when you consider that geometry outcome with the um, greenhouse there as well. Okay, and back to this tab, there we go. Alrighty, so thank you for taking the time to join us. Uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of your summer. But if there's any questions, comments, concerns, thoughts about this document, we'll be happy to chat about those with you now.